Okay, I want to spend a little bit of time putting a few of the concepts that we've talked about together and we'll do this visually because it's going to be easier and uh, we'll be able to kind of draw some connections here. First of all, uh, about two and a half years ago, I put together a video where I talked about the five kingdoms. And the five kingdoms, everyone in the world is a member of five different kingdoms. And these have to be in order. So one being more, most important, five being the least important. And uh, if you don't get them in order, you get in all kinds of trouble. The first kingdom is between you and God. Second kingdom is you and your family. Third kingdom would be you and your extended family and close friends. Fourth kingdom would be organizations. This would be like the church. This would be work, nation. And the fifth would be uh, the world. This is global. All right, so these have to be in order. Um, and there's a very good reason for that. And let's just go through that a little bit because people love to get these wrong. They love to get them out of order. And when you get it out of order, you really mess up a whole lot. So um, we are all in a world of darkness, aren't we? And uh, so if we just uh, draw ourselves here in this world of darkness, and we are alone but this first kingdom um, god knew that we would be alone and uh, he gave us access to himself now you've been given a gift most people don't really realize that of all of the talents they've been given the one talent they've been given that is uh, most important is the temple and by temple, I'm not talking about an external temple. A lot of people love to have this external temple. And they say, you know what? I'm really spiritual and I'm going to go to the temple. And whenever I need God, I'm going to go to the temple over here. But truth is, the temple is you, your body. And not only that, but you've been given a connection to God, the ability to connect to God. And a massive part of this is your heart. That connection to God is your heart. And uh, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. So there is the potential, you have an antenna built in, that is a potential for connection to God. You always have it. You've always had it. You've, you've been born with it. Um, this, a lot of people like to refer to this as the light of Christ or your conscience. Um, you also have your integrity, which really is connected to uh, who you know God to be. Um, you also have the Holy Spirit. And really this light of Christ is the Holy Spirit. Um, and it's something that you've been given, it's a gift. It is part of this talent massive massive talent you've been given so you have you have a built-in antenna we'll just make this that's an antenna um, that can connect up to god and if you face that antenna the right way and you use your desires and the intents of your heart to face toward god then this light begins to increase and as you use that light to connect to god and to get inspiration into your mind and into your heart, into your body, then your body, your whole body, begins to be filled with light to the degree that you pay attention to this antenna here and the light that you've been given. It is a massive, massive gift. Um, you know, Jesus, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, the life. He is the light. He is the way. Um, he has given us the ability to have that connection. Now we might screw things up and all of this might turn to darkness. You know, this might, this all might go dark to a degree, but it, it's just turning back to God to get, to get this light. God is always broadcasting. God is always open. 
he's always, always open to us. He never shuts off that channel. We're the ones who shut it off. So whether or not we are filled with light or not, this is all completely up to us, 100% up to us. Um, if we're in darkness, um, all that's needed is to find a way to connect to God. I'm not saying that's easy, but you do have all of these gifts, um, everything that you know, um, even though you're sitting in the darkness, even though um, things are really terrible and people are attacking you and you feel unloved by the world and you feel lost, you still know um, and you've been given uh, those gifts and to the degree that you take these gifts that you've been given and you cultivate them, you develop a stronger antenna, this antenna here, you develop a stronger antenna toward God. So as far as um, the importance of this step, this is kingdom one. And if all you ever did in your life was cultivate kingdom number one, uh, your ability to connect, connect to God, uh, you would be in a good place. And you say, well, what about my family? Well, what about your family? Um, so let's go back here and look at these five kingdoms. So family, people love to put the family absolutely first. Um, if you cross out this kingdom here of God and you say, I'm going to focus all my time on the family, um, but you go back here, and instead of you being full of light, you are full of darkness or stress or um, fear or you just don't have inspiration. You don't have light from God. You don't have direction. How can you give your family direction if you haven't cultivated this, number one? You cannot. You should not. It's interesting, uh, Jesus when he was with his apostles, um, he he died, he uh, was resurrected, he came to his apostles, and you know his apostles were sent to go out and teach, and they were going to go out to the whole to the world, to all the nations, to go and teach. And he told them, "Tarry here in Jerusalem um, until uh, you receive the endowment of power from on high that I'm going to send you." He he said, "Wait around here. Don't go out. Don't go teach." Tarry here until you receive this endowment of power from on high. Now, why did he say that? Um, so that was the end of the book of Luke, just after after his resurrection. And then first chapter of Acts, um, it says that that endowment of power from on high that they were waiting for was the baptism of fire and the Holy Ghost. Okay, and are we seeing a connection here? Um, are we filled with this light? Are we filled with the fire of God? Um, are we filled with God's spirit? And he told his apostles, wait around until you receive this endowment of power from on high. We love to think of, of the temples, um, temples of God. Everybody wants to go and get their endowment. And you know what? We've left off one really important uh, part of the endowment phrase. Uh, this endowment phrase should be the endowment of power from on high. And probably the reason we don't use that phrase is that nobody goes to the temple and actually gets endowed with power from on high. Nobody goes to the temple and receives a baptism of fire and the Holy Ghost. Uh, there was a time when this happened uh, in the past. This is actually the purpose of temples. Back in the time of the Kirtland Temple, um, you will find in the Doctrine and Covenants, in the uh, in many sections of the Doctrine and Covenants, these revelations where God says, uh, "Terry here." He says the same phrase, "Terry here in Jerusalem until you have, uh, until you receive uh, the endowment that that uh, is going to be given in the temple in Kirtland." What the people were waiting for in for Kirtland in building the temple, what they were preparing for, and they were doing this months up until they had. Uh, and until the temple was completed, they did some washing and anointings, and Joseph Smith was preparing them to receive this endowment of power from on high in the Kirtland Temple. This is not a. This is not the current endowment that we're talking about. Um, and when it came to the dedication of the Kirtland Temple, there were people that were uh, pre 
prepared and had a, an experience that was very similar to the day of Pentecost. And they received this endowment of power from on high that is talked about all over in the scriptures, which is equated with being born again, with being born of the Spirit. Um, you know, uh, John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water, but there comes one after me who will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost. That is the purpose of Jesus. And that was the purpose of the, the Kirtland Temple. Now, is it the temple? Is it the temple? No, it's the person. Um, this, the temple is not the point. Everybody loves to point to the temple and say, this is where the Spirit's at. No, it's this temple here. It's your body. It's you. You are the temple. And you have been given this massive gift, this massive ability to connect to God, to, to receive his light, to receive instruction, to receive guidance, to be looking toward him, and to get this to the next level. This is what uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost truly is. It's being able to be filled with light um, to, and the, the Holy Ghost to the level that you have um, the Spirit at the next level. Uh, Nephi talks about being able to speak with the tongue of angels. Can you speak with the tongue of angels? Um, do you speak the words of Christ? Uh, it says angels speak the words, uh, speak by the power of the Holy Ghost, therefore they, they speak the words of Christ. Are the words that you speak the very words that Christ would speak if he was here? Well, that's the question, isn't it? So, going back to here, five kingdoms. What is most important? Um, unfortunately, churches will teach you, church is here, number four, church will teach you that this is most important. And you say, no, they don't teach you that. Well, actually they do. Because they say, before you take care of the financial needs of your family, you need to pay tithing to the church. So they say, this is number one. Church is most important. Pay tithing here, and then you can take care of your family. Oh, boy. Well, we've, we do have this in reverse order. Well, what else happens? Well, um, lately, the church has been telling you, be a good global citizen. Okay, so put your, and they told you, uh, you know, get a experimental shot before um, you put your own health considerations at need because you've got to be a good global citizen. Put everybody else first. That is absolutely 100% backward. Um, if you, for example, put the temple first, you are, you're putting the church first. Um, you're putting an external entity there. Some people also want to uh, put a person. They want to say, okay, well, we have a a prophet or maybe a, a pope or whoever, um, and whatever they say is the most important. And their inspiration, I'm going to channel, for whatever reason, I believe that God channels his light to that person and then over to me. Um, can you see how that doesn't work? I hope people really see how that works. And why doesn't that work? Go back to these really, really important gifts that you've been given. Okay, these are fundamental. These are gifts, these are talents, these are things that you are supposed to develop. It is part of this antenna that you have that connects to God. Um, this light of Christ, uh, your conscience. If your conscience tells you um, that you're supposed to do somebody something, and then somebody else comes and tells you um, there's something else that you need to do. Uh, for example, what the LDS Church says is, if your revelation contradicts um, the revelation of the prophet, then uh, then it's not of God. So basically, they're telling you. And this is really weird. They're telling you that... Um, I don't want to do that. I don't know how to erase that properly. They are telling you that your line of revelation um, is unreliable. And the most reliable is this outside thing, uh, which is crazy. So this, this, this line here... 
uh, to most children, uh, that connection to God, um, their their light, their their desires, their their uh, innocence, the their ability to know what's right and wrong and what's good or bad, they are really really good at that. Um, it's very obvious to them. As adults, um, no, uh, we adulterate that. I don't. Know, maybe that's why it's called a. Ad- adulterate because adults really screw this up um, because they tend to put um, authority and hierarchy and uh, the things of the world ahead of um, of themselves of the connection to God where this kingdom number one this connection to God is the most important um, you know David O. McKay is is uh, quoted as saying um, there is no success which can compensate for failure in the home. And he didn't actually say that first, but I guess he quoted somebody. Um, and people love that. And they say, there is no success that can compensate for failure in the home. Um, is that true? Is number two most important? Um, it is not. Now, is I'm not saying number two is not important. It is fantastically important. Your family, your spouse, the people you are around, they are very, very, very important. But the success that is most important that you cannot compensate for is the success of you connecting to God. There is nothing more important than your connection to God. Nothing. And so God is always open to this connection with you. He's always broadcasting. And not only that, he's given you all kinds of gifts and talents to be able to connect to him. He's given you... uh, the, the scriptures which teach you how to do that. He's giving you Jesus as an example of what that looks like. And Jesus wasn't ever, he, he never was this, he, he never had this connection. He never said, um, you know, you, you got to connect to this other guy over here um, in order to get to my father. He said, no, I, I'm demonstrating the way to get to the father and I'm showing you how it's done. And so his connection to the father, he would find himself as often as he could, he would go out into into the mount, mountains and he would pray. And he would reestablish and strengthen this connection to God. This connection here, super, super, super important. And how thick was the bandwidth on that connection between him and God? Well, because he cultivated that every day, because he was always seeking it, because he was always seeking his Father's will, he had this massive bandwidth. And what did that look like? It looked like him having the Holy Spirit. He he always kept his integrity. His conscience was always void of offense toward God, and and his light. Um, you know, Isaiah nine two said um, the people in darkness have seen a great light. This is Christ. This is Jesus. Why did they see a great light? Well, because their light, his light, was connected up to God's light, and so that allowed other people to see him. So again, let's go back up to the five kingdoms. Um, Jesus' connection to God was at, you know, as much as he could, that was, that was his first priority, it was getting that to, to 100% of what he had the ability to get to. And then, as he went to his family, as he went to uh, his extended family and friends, people around him, as he went into the synagogues, as he went into the temple, as he went to other places, and as he went out into the world, he was sharing God's light with them. He was sharing God's light, and that was because he was full of light. We are not supposed to share uh, darkness. That is why, and we go back to the where Jesus told people, he said, tarry in Jerusalem, tarry here until you receive your endowment of power from on high. What is he saying? Well, he was telling his apostles, um, you need to wait, you, you need to get light first before you can share it. Um, so to whatever degree you can uh, tune up your bandwidth uh, and get this light, the light of Christ, um, the Holy Ghost, um, the the love of God, um, to have your heart open. Uh, once your heart is open toward God and your face toward God, this connection here, this connection becomes really, um, it's as wide open um, as, as you can make it. And as you practice that over time, it gets wider and wider open. Now, if you if you want to focus your efforts toward looking in a different direction, let's may, maybe you are always going. You're saying, "Well, I'm going to go to the temple to get more light." Well, that's nice t- 
to, to go to a place that's peaceful so that you can get more light. But the temple is not the source of light. What is the source of light? It's God. God's the source of light, okay? So wherever you go, whether it's the temple or whether it's in the mountains, whether it's your in your home, um, wherever that is, what are you seeking? Well, it's got to be you facing toward God. It has to be. Um, and do you depend on another man to give you light? Um, and what happens if that man goes away? Um, what happens if uh, the, the temple gets closed down for a couple of years? Uh, what happens if uh, your source of light is, let's say, uh, the church or a church? And so you've got this church building here with a steeple or a cross, whatever, and every Sunday you depend on that church to give you light. Um, well, what you're doing is you are really curtailing your ability to uh, have this high bandwidth of light from God. I'm not saying that there's not light in churches. There is, or there can be, I should say. Uh, there can be, and there are people in church, hopefully, you would hope that there are people that have actually done this correctly and that have actually gone to God first and are full of light and can share that with you. But when it comes down to it, uh, we hear the parable of the talents and the five wise virgins um, had taken the Holy Spirit as their guide. What does that mean? Okay, that means that in everything that they did in their life, in everything they did, um, this connection here was preeminent. That's taking the Holy Spirit as your guide because the Holy Spirit really is the mind of God. And so they nurtured that connection to God. They, uh, when they felt darkness, when they felt loss of direction, they turned back to God and nurtured that connection to God. And so that is taking the Holy Spirit as your guide, is nurturing the blessing and connection that you have to God. Um, and it doesn't matter if the temple's closed or it doesn't matter if it's not Sunday. It doesn't matter whether you're in your house at work or in the mountains or whether you're in a prison or whatever. If you know how to get that connection to God, if you know what that feels like and, um, and how to open your heart to God, no matter what the situation, then, uh, then you have taken that talent and you've multiplied. If what you've done is pointed toward other people, then what have you done with this massive talent that you've been given? This talent of, being, of having this antenna toward God, this ability to connect to God, that you have a conscience, you have your integrity, you have uh, the light of Christ, you know what's right and what's wrong, and you need, to, you need to be doing it. But to the extent that you squelch that by doing what somebody else tells you, um, if you, if your conscience tells you um, you should be giving to the poor or the needy. And somebody else tells you, um, yeah, but you first need to be giving to uh, something else, somebody else, this other cause. And it, it pricks your conscience to do that. Um, are you going to squelch what you believe is right? Or are you going to use your conscience to know what is right? Do you trust God? Do you trust your ability to feel that? Or have you put all of your trust in a man or an organization um, to tell you what is right and what is wrong? Um, if you have, if you trust this organization or other people more than you trust God, then really that talent, you've buried that talent which we, you've been given. This kingdom, this first kingdom, this most important kingdom has been, has been thrown out like it, like it doesn't matter. And so the next life, um, you'll go to the other side. You won't have those um, uh, connections. You, uh, and God will say, I, I wish you knew me. Uh, you don't know me. You never cultivated that connection. And it really will be like the parable of the, of the ten virgins. But this is the parable of the ten virgins. It's the parable of the talents. Um, it's everything. Uh, Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is like a goodly merchant seeking pearls, who when he finds the one, the, the most exquisite, perfect pearl, he sells all that he has for that one thing. And we've talked about that main thing. What is that main thing? That main thing is being born of the Spirit, uh, knowing God, 
having that connection to God, being having the ability to go back to God and actually doing it on a regular basis and being filled with light. And this gives you all of the blessings uh, and all of the, the power that, that Christ had. That is the intention of him. He says, um, you know, those who follow him, uh, greater works than he did will, will he do because he goes to the Father. And he intends you to use the Holy Spirit for that connection. So you've been given the talents. There is an order to this. There has to be an order to this. Um, it's being filled with God's love. It's doing what you know God wants you to do and actually seeking it and then cultivating those gifts that he's given you, which are, which are a pearl of great price, which is, which is everything. Um, so trust in that, trust in God and work on that relationship with him. Um, and hold on to that because that's most important. If you get that right, then you can get your family right. Then you can get things right with your extended family and friends. Then you can get things right with the organizations that you're a member of. Um, but do not put anything or anybody above your connection to God.